Honeypots are servers or services that are designed to attract attention from hackers or from a specific group of people and then to analyze their behavior once they have accessed the honeypot. Both types serve the same end goal, essentially, but they are designed a little bit differently. The honeypots that are designed to catch hackers will usually be a website or some other type of service that is purposefully designed with a security flaw. So it could be something as simple as leaving the root account enabled for SSH, because usually you'd want to disable that on a server, uh, or it could be something where you need to go a little bit more hands-on to exploit it, like it could be a programming error somewhere in the stack of software that the server is using. But the idea is that you want to keep the hacker busy trying to hack something that looks like it has sensitive information, something that the hacker would want, uh, so that we can see how they would go about attacking the real machine that actually does have that sensitive information on it. And this might be used for something as simple as to just keep the hacker preoccupied so that they don't actually have time to go after your real server. But more commonly, it is used to actually log the activity and write down everything that the hacker is actually doing so that you can see the exact strategy, uh, the exact type of attacks that the hacker would use against you. Uh, there's a possibility that the hacker might even have some zero days that they're going to use. So this would be an exploit that isn't known by antivirus. It might be something that the hacker paid some antivirus or paid a malware developer for, or they might have developed it themselves. And if you can identify that on the honeypot before it ever hits your machine, then you have time to potentially create virus definitions and copy signatures of it into your own antivirus database so that once they do try to hack you, once they try to hack the real machine, they instantly get stopped by the antivirus. Now, a lot of the hacking of insecure websites that happens these days is automated. There's bots that will literally spam login attempts to random domains with the root user's IDs, and they'll try a bunch of different passwords from a password list to try and get in. Uh, that's why, like I said, if you have SSH on a server, it's a good idea to just disable the root login, or at the very least, change the root username, because these bots, they're usually not designed to just try with a bunch of different random usernames either, uh, unless your username is something like admin or administrator, you know, that's pretty obvious that it would map to a root user. So make sure to change root to something that's not obvious, uh, but you also want your honeypot itself to be a little less obvious. Uh, you don't want to make it so vulnerable that the automated malware that's floating around on the web is just able to take over your site on its own um, because you really aren't going to learn anything from catching that stuff. That stuff's pretty well known, well documented. Uh, typically, it's just used by script kitties and fairly basic security measures should be enough to stop them. Uh, and you also don't want your honeypot to be fingerprinted as a honeypot. So. Uh, a lot of the automated malware, or especially a hacker that is actively trying to compromise your machine, uh, they might look for things to check and see if it's a honeypot because obviously they know about honeypots as well. Uh, so they might look for things like if they're in a virtualized environment or on bare metal because if they are expecting the host to be on bare metal, if it's some type of application that would greatly take advantage of it, and they see that it's on a VM that might raise some suspicion because it's obviously cheaper to have a honeypot on a VM than on a dedicated machine. And if the service is something that wouldn't function very well as a VM, they're going to wonder, huh, why is this actually a VM? Uh, some other things that uh, could indicate that it's a honeypot would be uh, like the naming of folders. So if it's a machine that was just created and there's one folder that says top secret, uh, that looks like it might be bait to the hacker. Uh, or if weird things are going on on it, like if HTTP connections are disabled to a common site on a server that should have HTTP enabled, that could also indicate that it's a honeypot. If there's far fewer services that are running on it for some weird reason, uh, that could also indicate that it's a honeypot. Basically, you want this site to look as legit as possible to get the hacker to use some technique that isn't well known so that you can see that zero day malware and then be able to patch your system against it. 
Now, the other type of honeypot is more related to detecting other types of criminal activity besides just hacking, uh, and they're usually run by law enforcement. It's basically like a sting operation. So these will be websites that will offer some type of illegal goods or services. Uh, they might be related to things like terrorism, and usually they're on the dark web and they are typically designed in such a way to grab as much information about their users as possible. So some indications that a site might be a honeypot on Tor is if it's purposefully requiring you to lower your safety setting. Uh, so typically a site on Tor is going to be able to work with the safer or the safest option. In fact, a lot of sites like the darknet marketplaces will even require you to have the safest setting enabled just to access the site. Uh, so basically, if they see that you have JavaScript running, they'll say, no, you know, you're not using a proper configuration, you can't connect. Uh, because if a site has JavaScript running on it, it's gonna be able to do a lot more fingerprinting than if it's disabled. Uh, you also typically want to make sure that uh, whatever you're accessing is actually a hidden service. Uh, so of course, you can use Tor to access ClearNet sites, uh, and that's perfectly fine. But if you do access a ClearNet site from Tor, then the site is going to see the exit node uh, that you're using when it when you go to it. Whereas if you access a Onion site, it's not actually able to see the IP of the exit node. So it's a little bit more secure there. Now, you might be thinking that this is no big deal that they can see your exit node because it's not your real IP address and it's two other hops away from you uh, on the Tor network. But if you were to combine it with some extra things, uh, you can actually de-anonymize users. Uh, and that's what was done in this article that talks about how to set up a Tor honeypot. Uh, so this guy, basically he set up a site that was supposed to look like it's some kind of a pedophile service and he basically led on a few different pedophiles with different access levels of the site. So uh, I don't think he actually created like a real uh, pedophile site because obviously that would be illegal even for him to do it. Only, you know, only law enforcement is, is able to actually do that. But basically he led on a few different pedophiles with different access levels. So they had to like go through these levels to be more and more trusted. And he was pretending to you know, be starting this really professional service. Um, and I think at the top level, it was like level five or something like that. Uh, they eventually had to run a program to do a security scan uh, of their system to make sure that I guess they weren't a fed or that they didn't have some fed malware that was installed because it's going to potentially uh, de-anonymize other people. Yeah, this is actually a quote from that he had on his site. So nobody's granted higher level access to the site until they've proven that their client configuration is safe and secure with no leaks. A weak client puts everyone else at risk. So they ran that program and then it completely fingerprinted their system. So it grabs their real IP address, their host, machine, OS. Uh, it's even doing uh, hardware fingerprinting, seeing how many processors it has. And this is combined with fingerprinting information that uh, this person already had. Because like I said, if you have your hidden service as actually a clear net site, it's going to grab that exit node. Uh, and apparently he was generating like unique addresses for people to go to so that he knew, okay, this exit node is this person. Uh, and he was grabbing usernames and passwords from people when they were signing up to the site. And in some cases, the, the username that they were actually logged into on their computer matched the username of um, the, the username that they basically created for that website. So you know that it's the same person. And apparently 7% of the total people that were visiting that honeypot were fully identified this way. So I guess that sick pedophiles don't have the best OPSEC, but these techniques, they can obviously be used by anybody and they can be used to identify people who aren't uh, doing anything wrong on free speech site, whistleblower sites and whatnot. So if the site is purposefully designed with bad OPSEC, if it's running heavy amounts of JavaScript, or especially if it wants you to download any additional software for it to actually work with the site, then you're going to want to avoid it. Uh, also, if it's an e-commerce store on the dark web uh, that you can purchase things from, make sure that you actually use Monero on the site. Or if they only accept Bitcoin, again, you might want to avoid it because 
there's really no reason to not accept Monero on the dark web. Uh, and obviously Bitcoin is a lot less anonymous. It's actually pretty tricky to get anonymous Bitcoins in the first place. You basically have to buy them from an ATM with cash uh, or mine them yourself from years ago. And again, you have to make sure that that wallet was not linked to your personal information either. And the same thing goes for other services like chat apps. Uh, I know that there's a lot of different uh, communication apps that people are wondering, oh, is this a honeypot? Is it legit? You just have to ask yourself, are they purposefully storing unnecessary information on their servers? Uh, or if they are closed source, you know, that's another red flag. They should usually be open source. Or if they have anything weird uh, that is going on with them, then it might have a secondary purpose of data collection, especially if it's marketing itself as a tool for being able to get away with doing illegal things. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, stay out of honeypots.